Well, I had the honor and privilege of spending 22 years in the FBI as an FBI agent. I spent the first part of my career working organized crime and drug cartels. Uh, I was promoted and um, supervised various groups, uh, drug task force, intelligence squad, and special operations group. I was also a crisis management coordinator, undercover program coordinator, and just got to wear a lot of hats. It was just a wonderful career. Well, this was another just amazing opportunity. I, I got selected for this, this position to help produce and, and be the host of a real investigation. We actually kind of stumbled on, we had information uh, that there was Russian criminal activity in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, mm. which I didn't even know about, even though I had worked Russian organized crime. And we started going there and investigating, and the question arose, why is there a sizable Russian population in this part of the country, yeah, of all places? There. And we discovered that there was a, an Oak Ridge scientist, nuclear scientist, who had gone to Russia on a government mission in the early 1990s and had made a conversion in, as far as his, his desire to, to make nuclear weapons. He, he met some kids and a teacher, and they, he was convinced that he didn't want to make nuclear weapons anymore. He started an exchange program, and they started bringing in young students, college-age students, to work in the Dollywood and the resorts there. And over years, there was an attrition of, of the population. But what we uncovered is it was a plot by Russian intelligence from the beginning. They set him up. In my opinion, he was set up to introduce this, he ended up marrying uh, one of his translators, and as a result, the, it allowed and enabled Russian intelligence to uh, get into a part of the country where it's very critical infrastructure. The Oak Ridge National Laboratory is the largest repository of nuclear weapons for the U.S. and on the cutting edge of other research. So it was a plot that really that uh, the government had overlooked. What sorts of services does your company provide to its clients? Just generally across the board, any type of investigation and security, we provide um, various you know fraud investigations, uh, litigation support, uh, corporate investigations, uh, trademark, just any kind you can think of. Really, I have a cadre of uh, former government mostly FBI agents, uh, CIA uh, officer, and uh, other Air Force uh, mm -hmm. personnel um, who are extremely talented. We provide a broad range of security services from personal protection to doing security assessments. And this is both for families and corporate-wide. Uh, um, really from A to Z, we, we can pretty much handle anything. It helps that you have some good connections there. It does, and, and I tell you, it's, it's not only connections nationwide but worldwide. It's, it's really a network that we're part of. And it's what keeps you up at night. That's right. In my presentations, which are really geared toward the risk, the current risks that are out there, okay. and I like to begin with what keeps you awake at night? What keeps you up? What's worrying you? And if, you, if you're not really sure, I'm going to make, I'm going to point out some things that are going to make you wonder about it. And my, my intention is not to scare people but to educate them. And in the process, there probably will be some fear you know, put into their lives because it needs to be. They're, the risk out there are tremendous. And I'll provide statistics and in various uh, examples. Mm -hmm. I'll have some more stories. But again, I'm not trying to scare people to get business. I just want them to be educated and let them decide what, what they do from there. Cybersecurity is a tremendous problem. They're, the, the number of hackings, the ransomware, everything that's going on today is, is just out of control. Mm -hmm. The problem is that as a whole, we have been, as a country, reactive. And even though there are measures you can take to put up walls and, and security measures to try to block these threats, they still get in. So for the most part, we react and find that there have been intrusions and react to that. Right. What we need to do as a country is design systems that it get it in advance of that. And that's what's being done at the Houston Baptist University with the School of Engineering, Cyber Engineering, mm -hmm. where we're hopefully going to create or they're going to create scientists and engineers who can proactively counter 
the very talented cyber criminals out there, cyber criminals in other countries who are attacking us Leading constantly. Leading cyber solutions. Yes, to, to cyber solutions, absolutely.